Hi, welcome to my virtualization tutorial. This video, I will teach you distributed file systems. So, my agenda uh, giving little introduction about the distributed file system and uh, discuss about DFS, the user view, what admin can do in the DFS file system and the advantages and finally, we will end with uh, DFS structure. Fine. Before introducing DFS, I would like to uh, explain what is a VFS is. So basically, uh, we have something called a VFS, virtual file system. So virtual file system, actually we can say it's a layer or it can, it's an abstraction. It's an abstraction layer on the top of a concrete file system, something like an NTFS. Okay. Now, what's the purpose of this? Uh, so, this layer actually connects multiple other, uh, you know, file systems. Okay, it's all connected to this VFS. So, when a user tries to access the data, he is not straight away accessing to the file system storage he is not he is actually accessing the VFS. So, VFS basically provides a unified way of uh, accessing uh, to all the files coming uh, from different concrete file systems. So, obviously we can say that this user get a unified view of all these files across the network. Okay, if it, even if it is a single user or multiple user, all these users will get a, a unified access uh, to this, you know, files and directories, whatever it is shared to the uh, users. Okay, what is DFS, distributed file system? So, normally you can see this DFS implemented across uh, Windows networks. So, Windows servers, you can install and configure this DFS and uh, the files and directories uh, which which are shared uh, users can access across the network and all the users will get a unified view of the files and directories okay let me explain how uh, actually the things are working so basically it provides a virtual view of shared uh, directories or files uh, in your network inside the directories we put obviously a file or data whatever the user need to access now, uh, basically how it works, uh, so this this basically uh, uses a namespace. So, here I can uh, show you that uh, this is a namespace. So, this namespace has a lot of reference to the network shares. These network shares are coming from different servers. Let's say server 1 and server 2 and server 3 from different servers, these uh, network shares are you know uh, attached to this uh, namespace. Now, in the point of user, uh, okay, from the user perspective, the user views this as a single file system, okay, irrespective of uh, different backends, he will uh, see this as a single, uh, you know, single entity. Now, what is the advantage here? User no, no need to bother about, okay, where it is coming from, how it is being maintained. Uh, so, and again, another uh, advantage is, you know, all the users across the system get a unified view. Okay, there are certain problems associated with this. Okay, now this server, okay, hosting a, a particular uh, set of docs to this, okay, documentation of uh, uh, this, uh, you know, company, okay, fine, or documentation of a product, we can take it in that sense, okay, documentation of a product, this is entirely stored in this server. Now, at a point, uh, this server failed. Now, what would happen to the data which is, you know, contributed by this server? The data will not be available immediately. So, this is something like SPOF, we call it as single point of failure. So, we need to avoid this kind of failures. We need to ensure that this SPOF do not happen and if a single point of failure happens, that affects the availability of the data. Okay. Then obviously, what we need, uh, so we need a fault tolerance system. Okay, DFS replication uh, basically provides uh, a fault tolerant application that increases your availability. Okay, now 
the users you know connect to the namespace so okay the namespace consists of basically three parts the first one is the domain name and second one is the namespace though admin is the namespace here coronia.edu is the uh, domain name and the admin is the uh, uh, namespace name and th third one is the shared directory okay so where all all the documents lies and now what is the advantage here even though this server fails okay we have two servers hosting the same info and whatever appears available here that is uh, replicated here okay the shared directory whatever available here that is replicated to server 2 in case this server fails still the documents can be accessed from the replication server so now you can see that these two servers uh, are synced so obviously it is mandatory and this is uh, server 1 and the dfs server 2 both are running in the same domain karunia.edu and uh, so both are connected to the namespace called admin look at here and also uh, there is a policy doc uh, which is coming from the directory d and the same thing is uh, linked with uh, this replication server also so this is this this definitely this setup uh, would increase the availability fine now the dfs administrator point of view so what the dfs administrator distributor file system administrator can do uh, what is being shared he has a control over okay what is being shared in the particular namespace and also he can design a hierarchy okay let's say that uh, so this is uh, docs okay now again uh, he can create another two directories saying that this is policy docs sorry this is policy doc and this one is uh, okay product docs product docs and so on he can design a hierarchy okay how it's need to be uh, you know appears to the user so this entire view is going to be unique across all the different users if you have multiple users everybody get the same view that's a, a pure advantage now uh, again uh, another thing uh, the administrator need to worry about uh, is the security that is a very important point and the basic security comes from the existing file system so file system enforces the basic level of security and the permissions again another plays a vital role now the administrator can decide okay who is accessing uh, you know this data and what kind of permission uh, he has either a read permission or a write permission he can decide on that okay whether to give a read access or write access it's purely depends on the business scenario Fine. let's see the advantages now even uh, you can share your uh, documents across a van so what is van van is a two different uh, local area networks connected through uh, what I can say uh, from a different uh, distance okay in between you have a uh, what uh, network so the DFS structure then okay uh, basically how it looks like um, uh, you have a name server on the top so the name server normally hosting the root namespace so here uh, this is the root namespace in the from the root namespace uh, the administrator can create a hierarchy something like software okay so this uh, adds a hierarchy or structure and inside that we have different uh, directories something like tools and training guides uh, tools are uh, being contributed by server 1 and server 2 and uh, training guides are coming from server 3 so these are individual host or individual servers and uh, which is having a lot of uh, you know documents or softwares uh, it is in the back end from that it provides this in the back end servers they use uh, different mechanisms something like raid to ensure uh, what the, your data will withstand in case of disk failure also fine so that's all about uh, the dfs and dfs structure and how it operates um, these are the references thank you Thank you for watching.